You may be in tech, you may be thinking about going into tech, but it's like, what career should I go to? Like, what is the thing in technology that everybody's trying to go for? Because tech is like an exciting, exciting career. This is why I got into technology, is I thought to myself, self, what's the thing that is gonna keep me as occupied as possible, that is cool, that is fun, that I'm playing with all these fancy new toys? The tech space, IT, brilliant. I remember since I opened up my first computer, to now just playing around with so much technology, it's exciting and you've got to stay, which is also a little bit daunting and a little bit scary, is you do have to stay like up to date with tech. Otherwise you do fall behind very quickly because things are changing so quickly. I'm a CIO, love tech. I've worked in management for a while and I've interviewed and hired lots of tech roles. Technology is changing so quickly. There's all these new things and there's a little bit of a shift from the traditional IT to where things are going right now. Five jobs. What are the five trending, most popular, most in-demand jobs right now? What are the best things that people should be looking for? What are the best skills, the best certs, the best roles right now in tech? We're gonna talk about that right now. Before we do get into that, my name's Emilio, love tech. Click on that subscription button. We release videos all the time on all things tech, I love it. And hey, let us know down below in the comments and give us the thumbs up at the end of the video if you found this video helpful as well. Before we do get into this, why don't you check this out? It get frustrating to just get confidence that all of your tech is running healthy, that it's up, that it's down. You need to know about all of that, right? You've got all these networking devices, you've got servers, you've got all of this tech that you need to monitor. And this is where a great tool that I came across called Pulseway will come in super, super helpful. So your servers, your networking, your end user devices, your IoT devices, your smart devices, your video conferencing equipment, essentially anything that has an IP address, you can add it right into Pulseway, make sure that it's all running well. I love, love, love the fact that you can open up your laptop and you can see exactly how things are going. You can download an app from the App Store from your Apple, from your Google, and actually get full confidence from the app directly how things are going. Get a 20% discount down below. I've got a link in this video description. Go and try it out. Never again be in the dark when it comes to monitoring your IT tech. Go check out Pulseway. Let's go down from number five down to number one. Now these are the five as of right now. If I recorded this video six months ago, one year ago, the list would have been different. And I'm sure that in the next six to 12 months, the list will be different as well. And we'll talk about the salaries as well, right? Based on US dollars, what are the salaries that you could expect and the certifications that you may want to explore if you want to delve into some of these. Here are the top five. Number five is, drum roll, the DevOps person, right? The DevOps engineer, the developer slash operations person, the glue between the developer and the technical IT team. The person who's making sure that the development side of things is happening, that they're developing new stuff, that they've got a nice little flow, but that also then the operation side of things, that the IT team can then take that, use it, maintain it, patch it, deploy it out to the workforce. Building the CI, CD pipelines, making sure that the deployments are being automated, managing infrastructure, using tools such as Kubernetes, using Docker, making everybody's life so much easier. Now, ideally right now, cloud is like the thing, right? So people who are on the cloud, organizations that are on the cloud are gonna need these DevOps people, especially in a medium to larger business. You may not find DevOps as much in a smaller business. They're gonna be generally in a bigger business, working with other DevOps engineers, AWS, Azure, for example, you're gonna need people who understand these platforms. So getting certified in Kubernetes, getting certified in AWS, specifically in the DevOps engineering space. The salary is going to range depending on the company, all right? DevOps people who work in some of these big high-tech tech companies down in Silicon Valley could earn truckloads. But let's just say on average, you're probably gonna be looking around the 150 plus range Again, US dollars, hot in demand right now. Then you move on to my number four, and this is somebody who is all about the data. The data. I mean, this is a thing where a lot of companies don't do this very well. They've got data everywhere. They've got system A, system B, system C. They don't talk to each other. They've got data on here, they've got data on here, but the data doesn't sync up, right? The naming convention is all over the place, and there's no central person that manages all of the data. There's no central data warehouse or lake that is storing all of the data in the one spot. 
maintaining the data pipelines, making sure that the data integrity is in place. Ideally, this person, in my opinion, should have a ear in the business and an ear in the data, in the tech space. Like a business analyst, a data analyst, those sort of two roles merge together into a data engineer. That they understand how the business operates. They understand the data that all the business systems are using. And then putting it all together, working with the pipelines, working with APIs, getting it all meshed together, named correctly, structured correctly, the databases are there. They understand SQL, they understand all of the systems, very, very important role. So getting yourself certs here, again, if we're talking about the cloud in the AWS, in the Microsoft Azure space, specifically around data engineering, there's no point sometimes to go and develop and build this new system unless your data is done well. The data is so important, like honestly, garbage in, garbage out, right? It needs to be cleaned up, understood, maintained well, workflows, pipelines, you're good to go. Now, salaries will depend really on the company, the complexity of the data, the amount of data. But let's say we started around the 120 to the 150 range for the data engineer. We then move on to our number three, and this is all about cyber security. This one has been in the list for like years. I mean, every single day you're opening up the newspaper and you're figuring out that there's been data breaches absolutely everywhere. And this is the person who is responsible the cybersecurity engineer, the cybersecurity analyst, the tech responsible for making sure that cybersecurity is paramount, that every single system is ticking the boxes, that every system is as secure as it can be. Patching is being done. Any relevant ISO standards, for example, an ISO 27001, which is a really good standard around cybersecurity, maybe a business should have that. Cybersecurity person will look after that. So it depends on the, the company as well, but some um, cybersecurity experts will be in-house inside of a business. Some will be working for a, in what's called a SOC or a security operation center, but they're responsible for providing security services, for making sure that all the systems, as I said, are patched, maintained correctly, to make sure that all the vulnerabilities have been addressed, to make sure that the firewalls are configured correctly, that all the software has been up to date, that there is right software installed on endpoints, on servers that detect abnormalities, hacker-proof your systems. They could be responsible for penetration testing where they are making sure they're like ethical hackers, they're gonna try to hack into systems to make sure that things are prevented, to make sure that they maybe do testing of attacks to simulate a real life cyber attack. Really, really high in demand role. These roles are not gonna be going away. And especially as the world continues to embrace more and more new tech, this role is gonna be even more and more in demand. The CISSP or the CISM cert, really, really important for cybersecurity people. These roles, again, hot, hot, hot. Around the 150 plus, you can get up to 160, 170, 180 plus, depending on the security levels, depending on the business size. The bigger the company, the more security footprint, these people are gonna be earning top dollar. They're really high in demand, that's for sure. Now, a long, long time ago, everything was on-premise, right? Everything, we had servers, we had network devices, we had all of our storage, our SAN and our NAS was all on-premise inside of internal comms rooms, all of that stuff, right? Everybody knows that. Everything is now moving to the cloud. And this role is a role that's been around for a number of years now, but it always ends up being in the top five. So if you're an old school sort of tech and you haven't embraced the cloud, you need to get more into the cloud. And this is where we're talking about the cloud engineer the cloud network engineer, the server engineer, the cloud architect, everything that is sort of cloud related, somebody who is working in the cloud, working with virtual versions of servers, storage, network, the security, all of the bits and pieces that are associated with the cloud. Three main uh, cloud providers, Amazon's web services and Azure. Is it Azure? Is it Azure? I don't even know. People say differently. I'll, I'll stick with Azure. And then of course you've got Google Cloud, but let's say, Somebody who knows those spaces is always, always in demand. Learning more, getting more certified in that space, very, very important. Because if a business is not fully in the cloud yet, they probably will be eventually. And if they're not, they may continue this hybrid thing where some tech is on-prem, some tech is in the cloud, but ultimately, you need to learn more about the cloud. Of course, certifications in AWS, in Microsoft Azure, and in Google Cloud are on the rise. Go and get certified, go and get training courses in those spaces, depending on whether you wanna be focusing on network, in security, in servers, in storage. There's lots of certs. 
there's architect certs, there's certs on everything, right? Security, really, really, really important. Now there's a big range in the salary space depending on the company size, the complexity, especially if you've got hybrid sorts of, sorts of roles, maybe starting around the 120, but they move up into the 170, 180, 190, 200 plus ranges for those that are like the cloud architect types really hot in demand this role. We're talking about AI, we're talking about AI, we're talking about machine learning. We're talking about this emerging trend that is only gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is my recommendation. As somebody who leads tech teams, I tell all my techs, guys, if you're not in AI, if you're not every single day playing in your technical skills, how AI can make that better, embedding AI into your workflows, making sure that you can automate as many processes as possible and you're gonna fall behind very, very quickly. And businesses are like investing millions, sometimes billions in AI because there's a real fear, a real fear in executives and business leaders across the world that if you are not embracing AI, you will fall behind. And I sort of agree with them. The companies who are experimenting with AI are more likely to do more cool, fun things, and ultimately makes a better profitability for the business because the business will be a little bit more of a leader in this space. They're gonna be experimenting in this space. They're gonna be using AI to make their jobs easier, to automate things, to give them stuff that they may have had to hire people. Well, now AI can maybe do it for them. But of course, of course, of course, AI is very, 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 it's a very touchy subject. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are on the fence, they're sort of in the middle. And for me, embracing it bent, I love that we are wanting to play more in this area, but also cautious, right? Putting guardrails in place, making sure that we are experimenting, allowing experimentation in AI, very, very important, but also making sure that there are rules and governance, governance fancy word for rules and policies around AI. What are the good things? What are the bad things? There's still a lot of unknowns in this space, but definitely, anyway, go back to the role, people who can run this space, people who are helping to develop these technologies, people who are in a business, who are the ones who are driving AI, machine learning, automation, is the, in my opinion, the role that is the most high in demand right now. Playing with the tech, knowing about the automation technologies, learning some of the coding languages, machine learning languages. It's really helpful if you do actually also know the maths behind the machine learning, right? Learning about the stats, the optimization, playing with real data sets, understanding the model development, ML ops, fast API, Docker, all of those sort of things. Now, some of the certs that are really, really helpful right here is the TensorFlow Developer Certification. You've also got the AWS space, so Certified Machine Learning. There's a whole speciality in this area. And you've also got AI engineering on Coursera, IBM, Udemy, all of these other platforms if you wanna learn more about AI. But this role is only gonna to continue to grow, especially as more and more companies continue to adopt more of the AI space. These people are gonna be on the high, high end, 170, 180 plus, because I'm telling you, the companies are using it more and more, and because they're a lot more in demand, the skills are still very, very short, so you've actually got a good opportunity right now that if you haven't explored this area, explore it, because it's really high in demand, and you're gonna be able to get paid quite a fair bit. So there are my top five. Did I miss any? Let us know down below. Hey, as always, click on that subscription button, click on the bell. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.